Hello everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are making doll underclothes, a chemise, drawers, and a corset. Alright, let's get working. So I have here some cotton that we're going to use to make this, um, we're going to start with the chemise. So I have some cotton we're going to use for the underpinnings. Here's Miss Elizabeth over here, all naked because she's not closed yet, and we're going to work on that today. So I drafted here a chemise pattern, and I figured we'll just start cutting it. I don't know if this is going to work yet because I've never tried this out, so we're going to make a mock-up, and hopefully the mock-up works. But I need two of the uh, front piece, or the, the body piece, because it's really a front and a back. It's be quite a gathery chemise, but I think it'll work. I need one for you, so I need one more. Here's the body here. These are the parts that fit together. I'm going to run these seams. So we're going to do this whole thing on machine, so no reason to not. Wait a second. Wrong way. The short end goes to the neckline. The pattern has a quarter inch seam allowance, so I'm going to run those seams. I'm going to try to fill them. I don't know if I'm going to be able to with a quarter inch, but we're going to try it. Alright, so here's our filled seams. I did manage to fill them. They don't look fantastic, but they are there. Now we're going to take it right sides together and we're going to sew up the sides. Now we're doing a simple chemise this time um, with our next doll, which I think is going to be the 1860s one next year. We'll do um, a yoke style chemise give y'all some options since I'm publishing these patterns. This is just the easiest style to do and yokes I sometimes struggle with so this is the absolute easiest way to do this. Alright we're going to fill this last side seam. Now that's all done. We're going to hem it next and then we got some hand work to do. I don't know if I'm going to be able to shove the sleeve into the machine. That might be a little too difficult. I'm going to have to do that by hand, but we can try. I'm thinking about a half inch uh, sleeve hem, so a quarter inch and then another quarter inch. It's probably easier to do this by hand. I don't know. Yeah, it's probably much easier to do this by hand, but it can be shoved into the machine. Alright, this is the hem. I marked about a half inch, in, well three eighths of an inch and then probably half, a quarter inch underneath it. So between, it's about a five eighth hem, it's about a five eighths inch hem all together. Alright, next step is I'm going to do some hand gathering across the neckline. So all the way around the neckline there needs to be a little bit of hand gathering. Uh, probably about a quarter inch from the edge. Alright, so chemise um, is mostly done. We only have a few more steps now. So, gathering the rest pin in, I marked the center front, center back, and then quarter parts on the sleeves. And I have here just a little band. Cut it 11 inches. It's now 10 inches because I folded in the ends. And we're going to mark the quarters on this as well. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and sew these pieces together. It's going to make it easier. I don't think I'm going to do a button on this. I think we're just going to... It should fit over her head. If you wanted to put a button and button hole here, you're, you can absolutely do that. I would cut a little slit maybe two inches down on the chemise, narrow hem that, and then you would have like a little buttoning uh, chemise as well. Either way is, is fine. We're good. Now I'm going to find my, the end of my thread, there it is, a little gathery thread, and we're just going to gather it to fit the neckline. Evenly 
distribute the gathers in it. We're going to do that all the way across. And then we're going to sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance. Very last step. I just took that little piece, folded it over twice, so we have a nice finished edge on the inside to create a binding. And we're going to just whip it closed, covering all the raw edges. Now I'm going to put a couple variations in the pattern. So there'll be this version, which is the simple version. There'll be a version where you can puff the sleeves and also put a band on the sleeves which I see frequently in originals, little banded sleeves. And um, there'll be a version with the uh, cut in the front, so you can actually do a button buttonhole. And you can mix and match the sleeves and mix and match the neckline to create several different varieties. But there's our little chemise. Isn't that adorable? Okay, I really want to put it on her, but I feel like we should wait till the end to get all the underpinnings on her. Well, let's do it now. Yeah, she's missing some of her fingers. I have them. I don't know when they fell off, but I have I have the fingers. I just gotta glue them back on. There we go. That worked really well. Let me move the camera back so you can see her a little bit better. There. Nice wide neckline, which is what you want in chemise, so you can, you know. Have lower neck downs as well. It's a good length on her, so you do want them to end, to end somewhere between your mid calf and your knee. I think we hit right, right below that, or uh, right in between that. So you could go about three quarters of an inch longer. You could go three quarters of an inch lower or higher. Um, I just did it right in the middle, and you can change that length up if you wanted to. But there she is. And let me measure her, that way you know what kind of doll it's going to fit. She's an 18 inch doll. Taught you. Know, your average, your average porcelain doll. So she's about 18 inches tall porcelain. And this pattern definitely fits her. So it is a little bit bulky, but when you get the corset on, I think in a minute, it'll be just right. So let's go ahead and work on drawers and then we'll do corset last. All right, drawers. So I patterned this out. Got a good working pattern. I think it's going to work. Um, I'm going to make these very plain. If you wanted tucks, add, if you want a quarter inch tucks, which will proportionately look right on this, add half an inch for every tuck you want. So if you wanted um, three tucks, let's just say that. If you wanted three tucks, go ahead and add um, so if you wanted three tucks, I would add an inch and a half to the bottom of this, just, just on the bottom. So we're going to make these plain. Oh, you will need two of these because you need one for the right leg and one for the left leg. for her waistband, which is nine and a half inches. So we're going to rip um, a little bit more than an inch. Let's do an inch, inch and a half, but then seam allowances. Cut a two inch waistband. We're also going to want some one inch to do a facing on the edge of the drawers. We're going to start with sewing this little curved line. We're going to run and fell it. If you're doing tucks, um, there's two ways to do them. You can do them before you do this step, um, but your tucks aren't going to match up here, but it makes it easier to do the actual tucking portion. Or you can sew this up and then do your tucks, which means they'll match nicely, but they're a little bit more hard. They're a little bit more fiddly to do because you have to sew, of course, into this little tiny hole. 
Alright, so I did the run and fell seam. I went ahead and hemmed them. Uh, three eighths of an inch and then a quarter inch, so half an inch uh, hem all around. And now we're going to bind this section. Uh, you can just hem it. Most of the originals I've seen are bound because once this gets sturdy and ratty, you can take it out and you still have, you know, perfectly nice drawers. So we're going to do it like they did women's things. Not necessarily, I don't know what they did with their dolls. I've seen pictures of original doll drawers, but I've never been able to get it close enough to see if they actually did it the way, you know, women's clothes were done. And of course, turn it under and hand stitch it down, which is what I did with the other one. And I marked the front just so I remember. So I'll have to mark the front of this one as well. Alright, let's put the drawers together. So I have the two fronts here. We're going to overlap them. That looks right. Sure. And I think I'm going to make these tying drawers, which you do see in originals, but they're not nearly as common as button and buttonhole ones. But I'm really trying to avoid doing the buttonhole. So we're just going to do a little gathering thread, quarter inch from the edge, just like we did on the chemise. Alright, we're going to take our waistband, um, which is basically the doll's waist measurement. And if you're doing ties, you just need to add the half inch for the seam allowance on either side, or quarter inch on either side, so half inch altogether. If you're doing a button one, I would add one inch. And kind of the same thing with the chemise. We're just going to gather this up and then uh, sew it by machine after we get all these gathers just evenly distributed. Which is always better to have a few more gathers in the back than it is in the front for drawers. Because you usually need more space in the back. Alright, very last step. So we have our little, little drawers. We're going to put the ties in. Which if you're doing button, button, buttonhole, you wouldn't be doing this step. But I'm going to shove these in here and just sew across. Tie her little drawers on. Get Elizabeth some underwear. That's about how long I wanted them. I wanted them to where you still saw her leg, like you wouldn't see the, the that part. It probably could have been half an inch longer, but I think I'm okay with that. underwear. She has her chemise and her drawers. One more thing, we're going to make her a corset and, and then we'll be done for the day. Alright, well, I made a fashion of a corset pattern. We're going to see if it works. I'm going to go ahead and cut it out of the real fabric uh, just in case it does work. And I have lots of this and okay, it was supposed to be a corset for me, but I'm, it's dull. It's not going to take very much fabric, so it'll be fine. I have quarter seam allowances that I've added, and I need four sets of things. So, um, two for the right side, two for the left side. So we have a front and a back double-sided corset, basically. I'm making this exactly how I'd make my own corsets. And here comes Elara. We haven't seen Elara show up like this in a while. Oh, you're going to sit right on the fabric. That's super helpful. Can you, like, scooch down just a little bit? Like, take two steps over. Perfect. That's great. You can lay right there. I, I just need this little space right here. Thank you. Well, now she's up and mad, so offer her the chair, but I'm about to have a meeting and I kind of need the chair. Only be here for a minute. You can have all the fabric you want. 
Alright, now these pieces are numbered. So here's number one, two. Okay, yeah. Okay, so they go like that. So we're going to sew this piece to this one. One's gonna go to number two. I'm just gonna pin them together really just to make sure that I'm sewing the right thing together. And then these right sides. And wait, did I put that in right? And then I guess we'll go ahead and no, we're gonna go ahead and do this first. Okay, so we're gonna sew this by machine. And then we'll just add piece three and then piece four and then piece five. All right, so pieces are all sewn together. So I have four little bits. I'm gonna sew them together at the front and the back. Here are the fronts of one side. Now this is normally where you would put a center busk, but um, no one makes busks this small, so we're just gonna have to not make a, a front opening corset, which for early 1850s is actually correct. Yes, front opening busks were around by the late, late 40s, but it doesn't seem like they became universal for a couple of years. Now we're going to sew both pieces at the front and the back, or actually at the both backs, so back here and back here. So then we sit down the very center front, just down that seam, do one bone on this side, one bone on this side, and we'll probably put bones in each of the seams, like I would not for a normal corset. Quick corset update, I've been working on the boning. So did what we talked about in the center front, just did a, a row of stitching right in the center and then did um, another row a little bit to that side, a little bit to that side, so there'll be two bones in the center front. And on every seam in the corset I've done the same thing. So stitching down the row of seam and then uh, a bony width away on the left and a bony width away on the right. <clears throat> and you can see how much better just the corset lays in and of itself just with the, the channel sewn. I haven't even put bony in there yet. And it's much stiffer, it just lays nicer as opposed to this side which isn't done yet. So, um, On the very edge I only did one boning channel on the very uh, back and we'll do some eyelets down there most likely by hand because I don't think they make eyelets doll sized. So we're going to do that part by hand. Other than that, um, we're going to finish doing the bony channels on that side. Then we would stick bones in. Actually, we'll probably do eyelets first. Eyelets, then stick bones in, bind it up, we'll be done. All right, we are boning this little corset. So I'm just taking millinery wire because I figured that would be the easiest thing to bone this with. I'm measuring out what I need. And then just sticking it in there. Like you would with regular boning. Sometimes I find it easier to get the last little bit by pushing on the table. Okay, cool. Alright, so that's these three done. So I'm going to continue in that manner. At which point we'll bind it with just some extra fabric and we'll have to do um, eyelets. Alright, last little bit. Putting in eyelets. So I bound the whole thing just in regular cotton as you would a normal corset and I'm putting in eyelets by hand. Mostly because the big eyelets I have, even the tiniest ones I have would be far too large for a doll. Doing hand in the eyelets is rarely my choice. In fact, none of my corsets have hand done eyelids. Well, the doll shall have them. And I'm just doing a wrapped um, uh, thread. Like, I'm not doing a buttonhole stitch. Alright. So I have here a little bit of uh, cording that I'm going to use for the lacing. I think it's a doll. Let's see if I can lace this corset on her. Yeah, that fits very nicely. All right. I'm 
Here we are. All right, I'm going to make sure that this is entirely moved up to where it needs to be. There it is. All right. Mix her in a bit. Oh, dear. Okay. And tie her off. There she goes. All right. I'm quite happy with that. I'm move it all up so we can see. Okay, ignore the watch next to her head, but there we go. That is a properly figured, uh, corseted figure. I might move out her bones a little bit just to give them a better shape. Like she had hips, which she kind of does. There we go. Okay. And there's the back. Perhaps not put on as evenly as she should, but <clears throat> that's more of my error. Actually, I'm going to tighten her laces just a bit. Either tighten here or loosen in the middle. I'm not sure which I'm going to do. Let's tighten. We've got quite a bit accomplished today. Drawers. Chemise corset. And there's the back. Looks quite lovely. I'm very happy with that. I'm going to sit her here. May you, can you move your bottom, please? I shall move you. So, yeah, she, that's perfectly acceptable little set of underpinnings. I think that's all she needs for now. I mean, obviously, ideally, she'd have a couple of sets, at least with chemise and drawers. I'm not particularly concerned about that right now, particularly using her as I shall use her, um, which is basically just to show the layers a woman would wear. Now, if if I end up with a daughter and this is now her doll, of course, this is a making doll clothes is practice for little girls, so she would make more sets of things. But as far as what I'm going to use her for, we're good. So. That is basically our little project. I think next if we need to work on petticoats and such, I don't think we're going to make a hoop for this one. We're going to do early 50s for her. So as and as such, we're going to do a quarter petty instead of a um, hoop. So that's going to be the next video is um, under petticoat, hoop, bustle, that, that sort of thing. And so we can all look forward to that next next month to get her the rest of her underpinnings accomplished. But other than that, thank you so much for joining me today making our little doll under things. I hope you have a fantastic week and I'll see you back here on Monday.